Now in the last level we had the power-up star that would uh, allow us to go right through these Mega Dragons. In this one we're going to make a testing room where we can test an armor system that we're going to design. Now this is still inside the free version of Game Maker Studio uh, where you're only allowed to currently have 15 objects. Um, and so we're going to utilize some existing things, but we're going to make it so it's kind of like the old Legend of Zelda where he had a green clothing at the beginning and then I think blue and then red or vice versa. And each one had enemies do less damage to him. So first thing we're going to do is uh, creating create a new uh, testing room here. And I'm going to put some of these dragons in here. I'm holding control shift here. There we go, there's those guys, and we're going to do all this stuff inside of uh, Sir Momentum. And then I'm going to uh, create some new sprites that will, uh, actually I can use existing sprites if I want, but I'm going to create a sprite, and I'm just going to call this Sprite Armor Red. And this is going to just simply be what he collides with to get the quote-unquote red armor. Um, and what would you know? Oops, that doesn't look very good, does it? Oops, choose the right mouse button. There we go. When you collide with that, you get the red armor. Gorgeous. And create sprite. Let's do sprite armor blue. And you can design whatever sprite you want for this. But this is just going to be what he collects to get the uh, the blue armor. I'm colorblind, so I hate this part. I think that's blue. It looks kind of blue. Uh, sprite armor blue. Oops. There we go. Now we're going to, of course, create a basic object for each one of those. Obj armor red. And this one actually doesn't really do anything and create object for obj armor blue wearing the sprite armor blue okay and we're going to put these into the room here's sprite armor red sprite armor blue there we go so ideally we want him to be able to touch that and that will change what he looks like and of course change the, how it affects when we get hit by an enemy. Um, to do that I'm gonna have to edit Sir Clicks a little bit so he looks different each one of when he gets the different armors. So I'm gonna duplicate Sir Clicks and call this uh, oops, SPR Sir Red. Edit and again I may have to intensify the saturation a little bit which will allow me to then colorize and ooh, that's nice and red that'll work very red doesn't have to look great we're just going quick here duplicate that guy sprite sir blue edit image colorize and we'll see how close we can get to blue I don't know that looks pretty blue I think good there now we'll save that and <clears throat> to watch the variable that's changing so we know if it's working or not I'm gonna reuse one of my controllers this object princess counter um, I'm gonna put it in the room here I usually put them up on the top left somewhere object controller princess counter right now all it does is count princesses um, so I guess we ought to put a princess in there to make sure it doesn't just jump to the next room of course even though she's pretty much useless in this room there you go princess um, don't need that. In the object controller princess counter, um, when this controller is created, uh, we're going to set the health to 100. So he has health, and when we have the higher armor, let's say the red armor is the highest armor, um, it should do less damage to us, right? Um, but we want to be able to watch it. So in our princess counter, we're going to add a draw event which does what it sounds like. It just kind of displays things or draws them on the screen. And we want the health to be drawn on the screen. Um, now this X, Y, 1 and 2, um, the X1 to the X2 is where should the left edge of the health bar be and the right edge of the health bar be. 
then the Y1 to Y2 is where should the top of the health bar be and where should the bottom of the health bar be. So if I want my health bar to start 100 pixels in but be 200 pixels wide, I would say X1 would be 100 because I'm not checking relative, so it's all the room's coordinates that start at the top left, 0, 0. And X2, if I want it 200 pixels wide, then I'd be 300 here, so there's a 200 pixel difference. And I don't want it very tall, I want it to be kind of a rectangle like you see in the image there. So we'll say it's about 50 pixels down, let's say I want it about 40 pixels tall, then this would be just 90 pixels. So 50 to 90, 40 wide, 200, or I'm sorry, 200 wide, 40 tall. Uh, the colors aren't that important, but uh, you can play with those if you like. So it's going to draw the health bar every step of the way. Um, and also for testing purposes, I'm going to take this Timing Dragons guy ability to move <laughs> out um, because I don't want him going all over the place. I want to be able to see what's actually going on. He's actually going to do just about nothing. Oops. Uh, well, he really is going to be doing nothing. There we go. Save that. And uh, my momentous sir, he's going to have new collision events. Um, when he's first created, we're going to have to establish a variable or declare a variable. He is powered up, but he's also going to be... Uh, uh, the variable armor should be set probably to 1, which is his current gray armor that he always has. Um, and then when he collides with the timing dragon, instead of restarting the room, we're going to do a series of ifs. If he has armor 1, it's going to subtract, let's say, 25 health, a fourth of his health, because he doesn't have very much armor. Right, so let's start there. If armor is 1. Remember he's colliding with the dragon here. If armor is 1 when he collides it will do everything in this block. Which is 1 he should get his health set to minus 25 relative to what it is. So if it's already at 75 it would go to 50. It would never just jump to negative 25 without that check. Um, However, let's say he picked up one of the other armors, and so if armor is equal to 2, meaning he has the blue armor, it will do everything in here. So he'll still lose health, but probably not quite as much. Let's say he only loses uh, minus 10 relative to what he has. And thirdly, let's say he has armor 3, which would be the red. So let's have it check that. And actually in this case, I'm going to use an else. You could use if the exact same way and it would work just fine. But just for demonstration's sake, you could have a whole bunch of if statements. And then your else will cover everything else that wasn't covered in the previous ifs. So if he has, if he doesn't have one or two, else is going to cover everything else. So let's say maybe he had five different colors of armor, um, and you just wanted to have special cases for one and two, and maybe everything else, and you don't want to keep doing more else's, I'm sorry, more ifs. You could say if it's higher than a two, so if he has level three or level four or level five armor, maybe all of those just subtract one uh, from his health. And so I'm just going to say everything else is just minus 1 relative. So again, I only have a few sets of armor. Let me maximize this. Uh, his gray one is 1, his blue one is 2. And let's say he had you know red, purple, black armor, all those things. That would be covered underneath the else. Because if it's not 1 or 2, it's covered under the else. And that would just make him lose 1. So... Now we have to actually somehow change this armor value, right? So when Sir Momentum collides with, uh, let's start with our blue, it should set the variable armor to 2, blue 2. 
and not only should it change the variable, and it would work just fine, but we also want to show the user playing the game that it uh, actually looks a little different. So we're also going to change his sprite into uh, Sir Blue here. And there we go. And likewise, when you collide with Armor Red, uh, it will change into the red sprite, Sir Red, and it will also set the variable armor to 3. Now you could have some method of getting back to armor 1. <laughs> Let's say you hit a wall. Let's say the walls are bad. Bad job. When you hit the wall, uh, I don't know why, what is that on there for? Oh, that stops them, yeah. Um, maybe that also sets the armor to level 1. So you keep your armor until you hit the wall, apparently, in this game. Maybe that could be lava or something like that. Um, but that could set you back to 1. So if the momentum guy hits red, he gets up to level 3 armor, and he wears red. When he hits the blue, he wears blue and sets armor to 2. Uh, then, once he hits the dragon, if it's a 1, meaning it's gray, he loses quite a bit of health, a fourth of his health. If he's got blue armor, level 2, he only loses 10. If it's anything else, including red, he'll just lose 1 health. So, theoretically, if in level 3 we have, oops, not level 3, uh, this room 3, which is misleadingly named, we should probably name that. We'll call this armor room. We don't even need to number it. Ridiculous. And that is our con princess controller. And we need a wall to run into so he can reset it back to 1 just for testing. So we'll put some walls in here. Oh, that was nice. Save that, and let's play it and see what happens. Okay, so before I even move too much, you'll see my health bar here. It's pretty big, kind of obtrusive, but it is there, and you'll see that it is 40 pixels tall and 200 pixels wide, just like I wanted. So if I wanted to move it or change the size, you just change uh, the X1 and X2, and then the Y1 and Y2, and that'll change all of that. Um, these guys aren't moving to make it easy to test. Um, one other thing you might want to display is what armor level you have, but it's kind of obvious when you have this. So if I run into these guys, whoa, one thing that should probably happen is uh, a couple of things. One, when I hit one of these guys, they should go away. So you can't just sit on top of them because right now my health is probably at like negative a thousand because it's still subtracting all the time. So let's go fix a few things. Number one, when uh, momentum collides with the dragon. It's also going to first and foremost destroy the other, meaning the dragon I ran into. Uh, also, inside my princess counter, I'm going to say in the step event, if you ever run out of health, you should probably restart the game. So, remember octagons are checking things, so I'm going to say if health is, you know what, I'm going to say if it's smaller than 1, anything smaller than 1, because if I'm at 5 and I subtract 25 health, it actually jumped right over 0, meaning it never hit 0. So if you set that to equal 0, you might not ever end the game and wonder why. <laughs> That's because the health never actually equaled 0, it jumped right over it. So I'm going to say if it's smaller than 1, 0 or less, uh, then it should course, try again a few blocks here. It should, let's say, restart the game. Oops, not repeat. Goodness, I don't want to do that. Uh, main one, restart game, there it is. Alright, let's try that. Alright, so I hit one guy, there goes a fourth of his health. Let's level up to the blue, and now it should just subtract 10, which it is. It's not hurting me nearly as bad, because I have the blue armor. And let's see, I somehow get the red armor. I change red, and look at that, only subtracting one at a time because I am so powerful. I have the red armor. Barely even touches me. So, and I can always, of course, 
Oops, I must have done something wrong with the uh, running into the wall. Let's fix that. When he collides with the wall, change him back into normal sprays or clicks. Enjoy.